Welcome to the adventures of Jon Snow, round two. So, I saw a comment yesterday that I wanted to talk about very briefly, which was, why is Daenerys not the Queen of Marine anymore? And uh, in the story, and I believe in the show she briefly mentions it, but basically she doesn't actually want to be the Queen of Marine. She's just there temporarily until the people can basically introduce democracy and sort themselves out there. So, in the, in the show, there is a little bit written on the wiki. I'll see if I can pull up an image or something, but basically... Uh, there's, a, there's a quote from her saying that she's not interested in being the Queen of Marine. Dario's in charge until they can sort of rule out amongst themselves, essentially it. So although she, you know, broke the trains, did all that garbage about, you know, liberation, uh, she is actually not the, the ruler. So I wanted to reflect that in this one. She didn't want to be the ruler. She obviously only ever wanted the Iron Throne. And that's obviously gone one in our storyline here. What are they sieged by? Oh, man, they're still at war for the Iron Isles again, aren't they? They're, they're um, trying to invade the Iron Isles. And they've actually tried to go for their... That the origin of the White Walkers, perhaps to try and, I don't know, get rid of the magic that built them. So I am sort of basing the White Walkers' backstory here on the backstory from the show. Which was the White Walkers were created as a weapon by the Children of the Forest to fight against the invading First Men. So, obviously that's backfired a little bit, huh? Uh, obviously that's failed and uh, this whole thing has gone on. In the books, they actually have a much, much different backstory. Whereas actually a member of House Stark and Lord Commander... Basically, had a bit of a diddle with this ice lady, and out of that came all of the White Walkers. Uh, but instead, we've got uh, we've got the show story because it kind of is a bit more straightforward. It's a little bit good versus evil rather than everything else in between. The goal of this episode is very simple: we have to discover Jon Snow's heritage. He's still lowborn, and of course, if he dies now, we'll be playing as a Targaryen, which is which is fine. It's nothing to worry about there. But he's lowborn. I think he needs to know his backstory. And there are a couple of people in the universe that actually know of his backstory. Now, to my knowledge, Bran isn't going to tell us. Um, I was advised that basically the way it works is is John and that person have to be leading an army together. And then basically they'll come up to him and say, hey, by the way, you, uh, your, your parentage. Not what you thought it was. And again, this series has a lot of spoilers for those of you who have... Uh, <laughs> for those of you who have... Not yet caught up on the current series of Game of Thrones or, or read the books or anything. So don't be surprised if you find out about John's parents who didn't want to find out who John's parents were. Got to be said. I know I've put that in the description, but there is going to be some complaints anyway. So there are a couple of people who know the truth about John's parentage. Uh, obviously, Bran knows in the show and Samuel Tarly knows in the show. So I don't know if they count. And I guess the easiest way to check, right? Raise an army. We put John on it rather than Daenerys. Why is John not allowed to... Um, did I forbid him? Oh, I forbidden him leading troops. Or oh, I've forbidden him from leading troops because he's Illyrio's commander. And I don't particularly want Illyrio to um, to send John into battle and have John killed. So what we'll do then, we'll raise our own army. We'll put John on the center. And then I guess we could test out some different people until eventually, hopefully, one of them will, will stick. Now, we may also have to hunt around the world for other people who know of John's heritage and sort of bring them in to help legitimize his claim. Because it's one thing to say, oh, by the way, I'm actually of a separate house entirely. But it's another thing to get, you know, another lord or someone who can verify that, perhaps. So we might have to go and hunt down Howland Reed is, is basically what I'm getting at here. Um, where's Samuel Tarly gone? Samuel Tarly, where are you? There you are. Samuel Tarly is currently in Velvet Peep to administer holdings. Uh, Samuel, I need you to lead an army just for uh, legitimacy reasons. Don't worry about it. Right, let's try Samuel. Where is he? Oh, right, I need to make him a commander. This is a mistake. Samuel Tarly, of course, known for his martial powers. He did kill a White Walker, though, in the show. Uh, Samuel Tarly, there we go. All right, and let's put him. Did he have three marshals? Did I read that right? Oh, God. <laughs> Gotta make sure I sack him after this. The, the hound is keeping a close eye on him, so that's pretty good. Sandal the hound there. Alright, is this gonna work? If not, we could also try Bran Stark. Uh, but in the books, and, and of course, because the, the, the mod is actually based on the books, I don't believe Bran can fire this event. But we will test out anyway. Um, so Bran, we're gonna sack... We've got to sack either Tormund, Daenerys, or Sandal. Um, we can still sack you in favour of... Uh, where is he? Brand start. There he is. He's crippled, so he also has zero marshal. So right now we've got John, Samwell, Tarly, and Brandon Stark. <laughs> the dream team. Look at that. Holy shit. All right. Anything? Nothing, my guys. I don't. Th I don't think that's firing, is it? Okay. So there is one character who definitely in the books knows of John's parentage. And I believe it's hinted at him knowing it in the show as well. And that man is Howland Reed. So because this is seven years after, basically when... So, so the bookmark starts, Jon Snow is the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch during the White Walkers have appeared. So this is seven years after that. So it's going to be roughly a couple of years after the end of where I imagine season eight is going to logically end. Um, it's kind of difficult to put a whole time scale on it because the book's time scale and the show's time scale is completely different. But Howland Reed is most likely going to be old and decrepit. He's 48. Oh my god, he wants to... He, don't mind, he doesn't mind coming to a court. Where is he? He's uh, Sworn Shield in the Arbor. 
He's hiding in the arbor along with Lord Paxter Redwine. Um, is it, is it Redwine, I believe? Yeah, it is Redwine. Okay. Um, I guess if we sent him a, a raven, maybe a little bit of gold to pay his journey over here. Hey, Howland, do you want to come over here? So, Howland Reed was the guy with Ned Stark at the Tower of Joy when they fought Arthur Dane. In the show, it shows Howland Reed stabbing Arthur Dane in the back and saving Ned's life. Um, and I believe in the books they say that Howland saved Ned on multiple occasions, but I don't think they ever say to that extent that, you know, they were, they were scummy like that. Anyway, um, some light to court. Yes. Does it show up on his kill list? It does! Holy shit, was slain by Howl and Reed in personal combat. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry, Arthur Dane. Right, Howl and Reed, please, for the love of God, teach John about his heritage. You guys also said that Krizanis, uh, John and Daenerys' firstborn son here, Krizanis was the name of the slaver that sold Daenerys all of the Unsullied. I think that's a great- oh, what a great name to pass on to your children, huh? They like your responsibilities for Krizanis' sake. You know what, the children of the future and all that shit. So let's try and give him anything. One of five. Um, so he's definitely going to get one stat in something. He got diplomacy. That's pretty good. I think if he'd got learn learning, I'd have been uh, very, very disappointed. Okay, Howland Reed. Please, my good friend Howland. Maybe. Oh, he's also got... Of course, there's uh, Jojen is dead. And then there's Mira Reed, who's apparently kicking around somewhere. All right, let's uh, marry her off to Bran. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. She's where? She's missing. Oh, she's gone missing. I guess they never found out what happened to her after she came up from the north. Well, that's sad. All right, Howl and Reed. We're going to make him a commander. He's also incredibly good. Um, you're sacked, right. He's also a very, very good warrior as well. He's got the formidable fighter trait. Okay. John and Howland. Is it going to work? Come on. I've been told this works. My news. News. Sorry, my lord. News from King's Landing. What? Kevin Lannister demanding a trial by combat, but his captor High Septum. By his captor High Septum, but was slayed at the hands of Sir Robert Strong. So this is Tywin's brother, um, who's apparently also joined this, joined the, joined the Faith. They're just trying to build up this, I guess, underground, like I said, railroad road network in King's Landing to save any survivors of the Night's King. This is all ruins, you know. And how the guy can't catch every single surviving human in the whole of, you know, Westeros. That would be absolutely insane. So I like, I love that the High Septum has got this little underground ring going on for all the survivors. But Sir Robert Strong, Greg Clegane himself, spoilers if you hadn't realised, uh, has has absolutely kicked the shit out of him. Unsurprisingly, I bet Cersei would love that. He's gone. Goodbye. Hey, Howland. Howland, my guy. Uh, I'd like to find out about my lineage, if you don't mind. We <laughs> nothing. Have I been lied to? Have they changed the event? Maybe. Okay, we're gonna have to find a different way to do it then. Uh, we can also craft a weirwood weapon, which sounds awesome. I think you make a bit weirwood bow, don't you? Saying that we have long claw, which is gonna be better than any weirwood bow. I think you can craft. All right, let's just walk around for a bit and see see if eventually it will. Uh... <gasps> Did Davos die? No. Davos Seaworth, the Onion Knight himself, is dead. Oh my God. Died of cancer at age 54. Sir Davos. He's one of the best characters, so I'm, I'm kind of sad to see him go. You know what? He's outlived by three sons. House Seaworth will live on. Let's make sure that House Seaworth definitely does live on as well, by the way, and marrying them off. Um, marry Arya to one. She seems a little bit highborn for that, but House Seaworth is, of course, just only from Davos, so he's a very, very, very low lord. Um, I don't know. Who have we got here? Forrester? Forrester's required house. Obviously, Dondarrion as well. There you go. You can, have a, you can be married to Jenna Dondarrion. Devon Seaworth. Stannis Seaworth. I want I want this house to survive, obviously. Uh, there you go. You can marry a forester. And then Stefan Seaworth is under Illyrio. Apparently, he's, he's tutoring him. A daughter was born to Samuel Talia and Gilly, named Melinda. Melinda Tarly. Is she one of the last surviving members of House Tarly? She absolutely is. There's Randall Tarly, Samuel's son. And then, of course, Melinda and Samuel himself. House Tarly lives on for another day. Just like House Seaworth. Unlike Davos, who is dead AF. Um, excuse me, Howland. I'd like to know about my, my heritage. I need to look into this event then and see what they've changed because I was advised by the... Co this is the last time I ever trust YouTube comment section. You've lost, you've lost trust privileges. What if we make Howland like our uh, marshal? He's, he's, good, he's a good fighter, but he's not necessarily a good marshal. What is Howland Reed good at? Um, Davos, 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 Jeanette, Howland Reed. Right, he is, he's okay at marshal, I guess. Leads from the rear, beautiful commander. Go on then. Okay, maybe let's swap him out for Brienne. Sorry, Brienne, you're fired. We've got so many good commanders. Holy shit. How does Daenerys have 17 Marshall? What, because she's got a dragon? Yeah, it absolutely is because she's got a dragon. Well, okay, that's fair enough, I guess. Right, Helen Reed. Let's also go for Varys. Okay. Fingers crossed. He'll just maybe approach us as the episode goes on. I'm not entirely sure. 
And of course, if we actually don't find a way to do this, the worst case scenario, we could just legitimize ourselves and make House Snow a, a legitimate uh, legitimate house there. Although, calling yourself House Snow when you fight against the Night King, I don't know if that's such a good idea, Chief. Perhaps we could hold a feast to introduce ourselves to Howland Reed, who perhaps doesn't quite realize who we are yet. That seems like a good idea. <clears throat> I've given orders for the Great Feast to be hosted in Velvet Peak. Let the preparations begin. It's very Game of thrones to have a feast, right? We haven't had one this entire campaign. Let's get all of these people in one room. To uh, This is going to be very odd. We're going to have some weird people meeting here. The best part about preparing a feast is to decide what food stuff to serve. Of course, we will spend lavishly on food. We want everybody to be impressed. I hereby invite you to this man. Okay, good. It's been... Oh, Illyrio's dead. Now it is Kosomo Nataris, who's not a big fan of Jon Snow because he's a foreigner. He might actually not be a big fan of Illyrio Mapatis for some reason giving this, this foreign man land. Okay, that, that is good. Okay. I guess we might have a legitimate means to... He wants us to make him his... Oh, God. Uh, that's quite a high council position. Um, his justicia. I'll accept for now and we'll sort of see what happens. The fire blasted right past my face, and I felt that the hair started to curl away from the fire. The fire eater had been a bit too careless for my taste, but he and his troops were already clearly greatly skilled. The guests will be impressed if they entertain at my feast. Daenerys is probably going to crack out Drogon because she's got, you know, big dip problems. To the noble John, may you live in harmony and contentment. Who is this guy? Um, prince Tenisio of Pentos. So he is the, the feudal prince of Pentos. We'll ignore that. Okay, greeting by Lord John. What about everybody else, though? That was well spoken. Thank you. A bridge in Velvet Peak has recently been destroyed by a storm, and the people of the town who pay a fee for the tolls levied on the bridge request that the Lord in Velvet Peak discharge the petitioners from their fees. Um, okay, so we can say, go for a compromise, or we just lose 10 gold. Um, oh, hang on, but if we go for that one, though, um, that one will give us local build time, local build cost, local tax modifier down as well. I'm going to go, it's 10 gold. Come on, it's 10 gold, my guy. Oh. Sansa Stark has used her attendance at the Feast in Velvet Peak to present a petition for justice before the court. She claims that Daenerys Targaryen had one of her kinsmen murdered. What? Oh, that means... Okay, so, so it's going to get a little confusing here unless I explain what's happening. So there is another Arya Stark, but in the books, there's um, a conspiracy, basically, with, uh, with Baelish, whereby he... You know, it's like, oh, why don't you marry this girl? This is Arya Stark. And I think he does the same with St Sansa as well. And obviously, they're, they're not. Um, one is Jane Paul, I think, who we don't see in the show. But that's why they're showing up. They're actually not Starks at all. They're, they're, they were just, uh, like, body doubles, essentially. What has Daenerys done? Who has she killed? Kinsman. Uh, she did not kill... Yeah, obviously, she didn't kill Eddard. Obviously, she didn't kill Catelyn Tully. Definitely did not kill any of the grandparents here. Um, Rickard was burnt by her father, so that doesn't count. No, what? She's clearly not guilty of these accusations. Like, she's legitimately not. Who else would she have killed? Lyanna? Died a natural death. Benjamin vanished without a trace to go and become, you know, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, all four of them. Yeah, no, this is a lie. This is just straight up a lie. She's not guilty of these accusations. She's fucking Sansa being jealous again. I started talking to one of my guests and... Oh, I thought that was... <laughs> I thought it was Helen Reed then. Okay, becoming friends with his brother, Brandon Stark. That's good to know. I guess he's got a lot to tell him. I great fun aside with everyone else. Oh, come on. Um, what else can we do then? Hold a melee. That would be good. Yeah. The Velvet Peak melee of... <laughs> of what? 8306. You know what will attract Hell and Reed to uh, perhaps talk to Jon Snow about things if they meet on the field of battle? A friendly competition, perhaps. You've decided to hold a melee in the Northern tradition, with warriors from all over Westro the Westeros Restoration Group assembling to take part. No doubt many among their number will surely be maimed in the battle. Oh, good. Well, we've got some very powerful warriors here. Uh, obviously, we've got, you know, Hallam Reed, Jon Snow, we've got Brienne, we've got the Hound, we've got Tormund and Jorah. This is going to be epic. And obviously, uh, our Gendry there, Edric Storm. This will be quite the battle. Let's see what we've got. The Lords of Pentos, come on. No, just legitimize Jon. Hey, just tell him about his parentage at least. Just let him know, maybe. Actually, you're not perhaps the parents that you have right now. The Warriors of the Westeros Restoration Group have put their name forward for the melee, have arrived. Let the fight begin. Who have we got? Tormund Giants Bean, Sir Handle the Howland Reed. This is too exciting. Toolsip, Northern underscore Melee 11. Howland Reed competes. Sandor Kulgain comp competes. Tormund, Brienne, and Donello. Who is uh, just some random Pentoshi dude we've got kicking around in court? This is going to be a hell of a fight. Howland versus Sandor versus Tormund versus Brienne versus Donello. Everyone, I'm personally rooting for Donello. 
Sir Sandor Clegane and Helen Reed sighted each other and engaged in combat. After a fierce duel, Sir Sandor prevailed. I think that's acceptable. I, th I think Hel Sir Sandor would definitely beat Helen Reed in one-on-one uh, in, in -on -one combat there. I can't imagine anybody's going <gasps> to... No way! After many hours of intense battle, only Lady Brienne Tarth and Sir Sandor Clegane remained in the field. They engaged in the final duel, which Lady Brienne won after forcing Sandor to yield. I Yeah, I mean, we've seen that in the show, right? So, a worthy winner. The melee has ended... Family first. Apparently, we, we love Sansa. Not in that way. Don't don't ship them. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. Hosting an epic tournament has been removed. Hosting a large feast. Removed. Still no parentage. Okay. Arya wants to marry someone. Oh, do I have someone for you? That's right. It's going to be... Uh, Gendry? What? Where's Gendry? Edric? Already married? Already married? What the hell are you on about? No, 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 no. This has got a... Oh, my God. 0% chance to kill. Why? That's annoying. Well, goodbye. Uh, and we're still keeping a special interest, obviously, because he is the, one of the last surviving members of House Storm besides Robert Baratheon's Bastards. Um, he could legitimize himself if he becomes a ruler, so we might want to actually chuck some land at him at some stage as well. The question is, who do we want Arya to marry? There are some good houses left. We've got House Connington. That's John Connington. That's actually the John Connington, huh? He does have grayscale, so... Oh, disfigured. Right. Um, this guy is one of the backers for Aegon's Conquest, which doesn't happen in the show, so we won't worry about that too much, because I'm assuming people are... You know, going by that for the most part. Um, you've got some good houses here. We've got House Dane. Gerald Dane. Yeah, he will marry Arya. What about matrilineally? No. I Obviously, we want to go matrilineally to keep House Stark alive. I don't care about keeping House Dane alive, to be honest with you. So let's go matrilineal. Uh, we could get her to marry Robert Arryn. I mean, we could go Robert Arryn non-matrilineal. They're already related, so this could be... We're, we're teetering the line of incest in episode one here. Although, then again, I guess we're already a little bit past that, huh? Okay, sure, we'll go for that. I hope because he wasn't in the Great Arm to improve diplomatic relations, it didn't stop Howland talking to him at the melee. Let's resign, just in case it does. CK2 is very particular about characters being in the same province for certain things to happen, so we'll try that instead. Well, honestly, fingers crossed, let's just hope that eventually Howland pulls his finger out and decides to actually tell Jon Snow about his parentage. We've got all the conditions for it, so I think we've just got to be patient and hope that it happens. Now, my concern is that maybe the Lords of Pentos are going to get a little bit annoyed of this uh, foreign religion, foreign culture squatter and his band of merry men. This, this complete band of randomers and miscreants, all of different religions and cultures in his court, especially holding one of his domain. I think we need to make a contingency plan in case they revoke our title and ask us to leave because we definitely can't fight him with 1,000 men when they've got, what, 5,000? So, let's continue with Project Andalos just because... It's carving out around for ourselves. Again, I, I don't really think Jon Snow would give a shit about Andalos. Maybe Daenerys would because she's obsessed with her titles. But it's just a nice place to go for right next to us that currently does not exist. Carving out around for himself before we try and take back the Iron Throne. It's what Daenerys did. So it, it would make sense if we try and did something. It's also kind of sensible as well. Clearly, we're not going to be able to take back the whole of the Iron Throne uh, and defeat the Night King with a single province here. So... First things first, then. What have we got a claim on already? We've already got East Andalos. We've got Mother's Valley, which are these two here. Um, we've also got the Lordship. Oh, of course, the Lordship of Winterfell is, is, is a natural thing, yeah. Okay, so we want Seven Stars, Father's Hill, uh, Andal Coast, and Hugavale, I believe. Yeah, so, so basically the South ones, right? Let's go for Seven Stars. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Faith of the Seven also consider this a holy site, don't they? Um, oh, not that we can check, because we are obviously not Faith of the Seven. All right, never mind then. Hey, Howland, um, would like to really become legitimized before we drop down dead. We've been invited to a feast. It might be a good idea to attend this. Either A, they're going to slit our throat, or B, we might be able to win him over a little bit and, and try and hold on to this title a little bit more. Let's travel to the feast. This guy has no reason to like us. Illyrio sort of had his big plan with Varys, but now he's dead. Taken early before his plan could succeed. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not optimistic. Lady Brienne Tarth has been a little naval servant, having successfully completed many tasks in the aid of Westeros Restoration Group. I agree. Um, should we give her 15 gold? Uh, or a favor? Oh, man. Honor over the snow heirloom. Could you give her Jamie Lannister's sword? Bet she, she would love that. Let's be honest, she would definitely love that. To Brienne the Maid, give artifact Jamie Lannister's sword. I mean, Jamie's given her a sword before. Not, that's not a euphemism, although it might be true. Let's give her his, his other one. He left this for you, Brienne. At the beginning of every new year, the Maid of the Fields and the Maiden of the Seas must be deflowered. That duty forced the Prince of Pent Prentos to bring prosperity to the lands. There is also, I think you did this in America as well, don't you? There's also a feast for all men of the realm to enjoy, which is started by the Prince. I hope he starts the feast soon. Ooh, Je Jon Snow, famous feast enthusiast. My liege, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. Thank you, you're welcome. Rewarded service, there we go. 
The feasting has begun. That's also good, by the way, because you only you get the plus 45 opinion and the plus 10% as well. Uh, plus 10, I should say. So if you're looking for a very quick way to give a load of opinion with a character, wait for them to reward service. Agree to give them an artifact, and then chuck them the artifact, you get bonus points for it. The feasting has begun, and the endless courses managed to cost my ordered are impressing the guests. The pinnacle of these is an enormous pie, so surmounted by small... I thought this is surrounded, but it's... Yeah, some odd kerning, I think. Surmounted with smaller pies forming a crown. That's vaguely ridiculous. Received message from the Sunset Kingdoms. Iron King Gorold of the Iron Isles writes that his kingdom is being plagued by a strange demon made of ice and snow. He calls for all men of honor to put aside petty differences to ride with him and reclaim the dawn. Interesting. Uh, was this the... Okay. Do we want to... So, Pentos. We, we were part of this war originally, but then obviously Pentos had a succession... This Magister isn't interested in it. Do we set sail for Westeros and help him out? Or do we bide our time? They are Ironborn. But I feel like it would also be Jon Snow would, would definitely take up arms if called to stop these... To stop the White Walkers. We haven't got boats, more to the point. We actually don't have any boats at all because we're landlocked. I mean, I'd love to help out, but we actually can't. So we're going to say no on that one. Daenerys is pregnant again. Okay, come on. Let's get a decent kid this time. We've got Daron, who is... Okay, I guess. Um, let's give him an actual dedicated guardian as well. Who would like to educate him then? Brienne of Tarth would be a very, very good military educator. Um, Jon Snow is so good. Every single one of his traits is fantastic. Jon will educate him. And then I believe, yeah, this son's already been educated by Jon. Will there be a feast next year? Okay, not bad. Could have gone a lot worse. We weren't murdered, which is quite, you know, quite impressive for a Game of Thrones based feast. All right, we've got... Who have we got? Sorry, Golden Scales of what? Golden Scales of Trade? Oh, our Lord Treasurer, Samuel Tarly. Um, okay, go on then. Get to work. Let's get him collecting taxes. We, we, we're going to need it if we ever do fabricate these claims. A daughter, Daenora. Is she any good? Uh, no, of course not, because none of them have any congenital traits. Okay, let's go for, I don't know, Thrift on that one, and then assign Guardian. Who are you, right? Who have we got? Varys? He might make for a good educator, I think. I think Varys would be a pretty good guy to pass his skills on, huh? The conjurer procured a rabbit from his hat and then made a handkerchief change color from brown to red. We are having another feast in the hopes that Howland Reed might come to this one. I think it's only going to be Everest Vassals, isn't it? That kind of sucks. Um, oh, no, she's here. Okay, Gianna, my courtier. My treasurer, Samuel, had noticed. Samuel Talis noticed that Sandor had drunk too much a shy vintage. We tried to dissuade him to drink anymore, but Sandor threw up on Samuel's shoes. That's the most Game of Thrones thing I've ever heard. My God, we could end the campaign there. Sansa Stark has used her attendance at the feast once again to be a whiny bitch. Seems to be in character. She thinks that Varys had one of her kingsmen executed. Did he? No, he did not. Not as far as I can think of off the top of my head. I think she's a liar once again. What is wrong with you? Such an attention seeker. Brienne's dad just died. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye, Brienne's father. Selwyn the Evenstar. Not quite as attractive as Arwen. L Dear Lord John the Just, I hear I invite you to a grand feast of... No, I can't. We can't do any more. My courtier... Alice Dane was killed by... Oh my god, Bran Stark's wife. He just cannot have a nice time of it, can he? Oh, he did have a son, though. Osric Stark, my nephew. Um, do you want to be, like, married off to someone else, then? Let's see, who have we got here? Um, have we got any good nobles? Um, are we looking for anybody at all that would make any sense? Clifton, Clifton, Clifton. Frey? A house, house Frey? A qu obviously quite powerful, if a little strange. Um, it doesn't really matter. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna find someone who's good, not necessarily of a noble house. Um, although apparently she's fairly good. Then, uh, what about diplomacy? We got anyone there? House Forester. She'll do. House Forester. Classic Northern house. That will do. Fine. Done. Um, speaking of which, apparently, oh nice, thank you, Samuel Tarly. Let's have a new spy master. One thing I did notice. Uh, a apparently we're a start now. I don't know whether that's some in-game event that's made us flip house, but that's fairly interesting. We're still a bastard, so it makes no difference. We're just no longer a snow, and nothing else has changed. So I don't. Know why that's happened. Oh, our flag is now our flag is now just the wolf. Understandable. Sansa also ran off. Sansa has gone to the arbor. Uh Lord Horace the Second. There he is, Horace Redwine. That's a pretty good husband to get, you know, one of the last surviving Westerosi lords, because the White Walkers can't get there. Um, that's pretty good. There you go. Lady Sansa in the North apparently also got a Valyrian dagger. Well, at least she's gone out of our court and can't accuse anyone else of being a murderer. One thing I will admit is I'm ignoring sort of game the, the, the CK2 aspect of things. So why don't we try and... What's our monthly balance right now? 1.73. Oh my god. Why don't we build something that might help give us a little bit more cash here? Um, got basic defenses. Private farms give 0 0.2. It's not much. Oh my god. It's so little. Um, <laughs> that's what... Castle Town. 1.5. Done. Okay. We'll, we'll take that. It's, it's just sort of your standard base game. Oh. Alerted by the... Please don't die. 
Please, for the love of God, don't die. Egon states his extensive medical experience leads him to a certain conclusion that your symptom is due to a serious illness and will pass quite soon. Thank you. I appreciate that, Master Egon. Much obliged. Alright, so what else can we do then? Um, oh, shit, we have the option to reforge ice now. Ned Stark was unjustly beheaded by his own sword, ice the blade subsequently stolen and sullied by the Lannisters. Obtain the remnants and reforge it. What do we need then? So that, that was, um... Oh, God, I can't remember either. So Jamie Lannister's sword, wherever the hell that's ended up. Who was he married to? It's all gone a bit of a... Was he not married to Sansa? Uh, yeah, Jamie Lannister, his sword, so that'll have gone to Tyrion. Widow's Whale and whatever... Oathkeeper, that was it. Whatever Brienne's got. How are we going to get that back from Tyrion? Because Tyrion's pissed off to become like a faith militant. Uh, former slave is fine. Septum. So yeah, he's now a faith militant over in the uh, over in the mainland. Not a literal faith militant, but uh, you know, has a Valyrian steel sword and is apparently fighting on behalf of the High Septum there. That's really odd. That'd be cool though to reform ice. I think that'd be quite a legitimate thing to do, like a massive Valyrian steel sword. At the beginning of every new year, we have this feast over and over and over again. So one of the possibilities is that Howland Reeve might say no to telling John his parentage. You might think, you know what, let's keep that, keep on the down low. Let's not let him know. Let's just let him live his best life. What I'm going to do then is, oh, Varys wants money for, okay, whatever. I, I trust Varys' judgment on things. What I think then is let's try and give it another chance to fire. Let's put John on here. Let's go to Howland Reed, stop him doing that, and let's put Howland on this army. Maybe it'll fire now. Um, John is fat. Okay, special <laughs> breastplate stretcher. Maybe this will work. Fingers crossed. H Howland, my boy. We lose a trait rash. Okay, that's good. He did have a rash there briefly. Howland, come on. Dude, you're killing me here. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. The forces of winter have gone as far south as they possibly can go. The deserts of dawn are usually sweltering even in winter, but not this winter. Ice has come to dawn, and the others have taken Sunspear. Three massive wild winding walls. Winding? For the love of God. Three massive winding walls. What is English? Could not hold them off, and eventually the Spear Tower itself was taken. Storm's End is gone. Old Town is gone. Harren Hall is gone. Casterly Rock. The Eerie. Winterfell. And they have... Uh, uh, the Night's Watch is falling in. We knew about that. So that's it. They've actually finished their conquest now. Do they just chill out and stop? I didn't realize Sunspear was still... Oh, I guess because it had to turn it into a, a wasteland. So the others have actually finally destroyed it all. Man, that's cool. Oh, my God, because they actually lost the invasion. Wait, no, no, no. They haven't lost the... Oh, the fourth invasion of the Iron Islands. Right, that's probably why then. Because they're taking so long to actually grab up the Iron Isles. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. Um... So, how many men have they got? Do they even get more troops? Because it's just Wasteland. Uh, 156,000 men. By the way, this? Don't know. Don't ask me. I have no idea why it's at 5. I originally thought it's because I used a mod, basically, to set up this scenario, along with a little bit of bookmark editing and some, some character editing. Um, I don't know what this is. I fully reinstalled the mod, and it's still there, which implies to me it might be something in the save game. Uh, so, I'll have to check that out. So, don't worry about that. I'll get that fixed at some stage, but not that it makes much of a difference anyway. Um, yeah, very odd. What is... <laughs> so odd. Hey, uh, Howland, my guy. My guy, I'd like to know my parentage now, Howland Reed. <laughs> Love of God, please. I don't know how else we're going to do this. He's the last survivor. He's the only person that knows. It actually fucking happened. I put the troops down and it actually happened. Everybody knows of the tale of the Tower of Joy from the War of the Usurper. My father's sister, Lyanna, was held prisoner there by Rhaegar Targaryen, guarded by three Kingsguard. After the war was won, Eddard and his companions rose to the tower. Howland, you madman. They prevailed in a battle worthy of song, was thought to be the extent of the tale. But Howland Reed was there and says there's more to the story. He says that Rhaegar and Lyanna have had a child together. One that Rhaegar... R Rhaegar? Rhaegar called his trueborn son and placed under the protection of the Kingsguard. He says that... No. He says his child was rescued by Eddard and it's identity kept secret. The child is... Jonathan Snow? Lord John the Just? I cannot believe this. I shall think on it. You keep your parentage secret for now. You'll be able to you'll be able to claim the Iron Throne at any point. Oh, that's cool. Or this makes me the rightful king. I Daenerys is, is fucking livid. I guess she doesn't believe the tale. Thinks it's a lie, a lie made up by by Jon Snow's father's true, obviously in her opinion, father's friend to try and put him on the throne and not have another mad Targaryen take over. Edric Storm as well, the other claimant to the Iron Throne who is Robert Brathian's son, will also hate us because we have a claim on the Iron Throne. This makes me the rightful king. We're doing it. 
To all the lords and ladies, I hereby proclaim myself to be the trueborn son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. That's not that's not us, but that that's definitely us here. John of House Targaryen, first of his name, King of the Andals and the First Men. So that's cool. So he sent a raven out on our behalf. Fantastic. Okay. Um, we're still Stark though. How do we not be Stark? Uh, legitimize yourself. Will that make us Targaryen? Dragon Drogon off the break. I mean, how do we become Targaryen though? I thought that was it. Adult Stark. Is this is this bugged as fuck? Nice. Okay. Now that you are legally acknowledged as Rhaegar Targaryen's trueborn son. Oh, by the way, Sandor died. Uh, rest in peace, Sandor Clegane. Too much drinking. I think that's appropriate. I, I'm kind of surprised he lasted. I was 53 when he died. So, now we've got a choice. Do we want to become House Targaryen? Do we want to become a Stark? Or do we want to honor both houses? Um, Stark Targaryen family. Stark. John will be. Okay, become part of a bloodline. So we become part of the Targaryen bloodline. Because obviously we're already House Stark. Um, do we take Targaryen? The issue with taking that one is apparently... I don't think our children would convert to the same bloodline. And of course that would still get us the game over. Would John... Oh man, he would definitely honour both houses. He would definitely honour both houses. Of course he would. It's Jon Snow. Luckily enough, the kids also did flip over Dynasty there as well. I was kind of expecting a pop-up to say like, Oh, Krasana Stark Targaryen is now your son, but of course he already... Oh, oh, your new heir, but of course he already was there. Okay, that's good. Um, the issue is they're still matrilineally married, so I have a feeling if they have any more kids in the future. So why don't we divorce her, and then remarry her? I mean, sure, surely she'll be... Yeah, she's up for that. That's fine. Daenerys is pregnant. The realm is once again being dragged into a fucking war with these White Walkers. God damn it, Pentos. Thank you for watching. This has been a bit of a weird episode trying to get him legitimized, but my god. Thank you, Howlin' Reed, MVP and savior of the round. Where is he? We need to give this man like a round of applause, by which I mean we'll send him some gold and award him the honorary title of Master... Oh, no, Bodyguard. He seems pretty appropriate for Bodyguard there. Stark Targaryen is formed. The children are of House Stark Targaryen. This is going to be pretty big. Now, does he have... Oh, he has both bloodlines as well. That's cool. Aenar Targaryen... And I assume these kids do... Oh, these kids did anyway. Of course they did, because they were both... Um, matrilineal transfer, patrilineal... Oh, no, you know what? They didn't. It's only patrilineal inheritance on both. So Daenerys would not have passed... Oh, but they were they were matrilineally married. Okay, sorry, this is very confusing. Um, but they were matrilineally married, so they would have had that anyway. I don't know if they thought that far ahead. Not sure. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This has been very interesting. Another kid coming up. Now, now that Illyrio Mopatis is dead, and now that his successor is dead as well, I don't feel so bad about sending Jon Snow to grab these lands. We're going to start building up our own realm. Then, my friends, it is time for the war for the dawn. And we'll see how well we do with that one. But in the meantime, let us give us a thanks and good nice times to Harik Alpha Scuff. I don't know what that means. Ignore it. Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyul, Sedini, Conspired Sea, Croesus, Escape, Fukunda Vasquez, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Sean Thornton, Smirtworm, Tom Terror 18, Vacuous Backers, Wolf Center, Zazzy 7011. Thank you all for your support. The Insane Hill Levels on Patreon. Thank you for keeping the channel alive, uncensored, and thank you for joining me in what was extremely stressful for me because I thought nothing was fucking working. I kept reading through events just making sure everything lined up there. But uh, we're good. Everything's fine in the end. And a thank you as well to Gray, Nathaniel Lindberg, my list is gone, Asaro, Betamus Max, Chris, Crazy Pat, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Haji Demar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Nathan Flores, Matthew, Nick, Panther Pearl, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Sir Thor the Swede, Wolfie, Zico, Adam Person, Sidini, Fresh Brennan, Noah Gallimore, and the Insane Pickle. Thank you all for your support as well.